Hello and welcome to Fueling Around with me, Jason Plato, and my very own comedy put down. <laughs> it's Dave Vitti. <laughs> Hiya, you all right? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good. Fueling good. Around is powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. So then, Dave, how are we? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I mean, last time I spoke to you, you were full of cold and all sorts of lurgy bugs and stuff, but you're, look, you're looking better. I'm back on 10 out of 10 at the minute, yeah. although I'm a, bit, I'm a bit nippy. It's cold out there. It is cold out there, but I tell you what, we need to speak to somebody about the cold, or maybe even the lack of, because today's special guest... ...is a gentleman mm. who's best known as one of the UK's most loved stand-up comedians. He's also an acclaimed actor of stage and screen, and has a little bit of a passion for cars, bikes, and other much more specialist machinery. He now <laughs> lives in Australia, where he's speaking to us from today, so I wonder if he's lost that Geordie accent. As we say, good day, can you back a tuna lake? It's <laughs> Ross Noble. <laughs> Hello. I do Hello. like the fact you can you can tell somebody's age by the canny bag of Tudor reference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what, age would that, and what age would that be then? Well, I'm just saying you'd have to be nobody under no one under forty is going to know what a canny bag of Tudor is. Yeah, and I it's know. like uh, it's like the fellow in the McDonald's advert that used to go a fillet of fish for my wife. <laughs> <Remember> <laughs> It's like, I mean, it's hardly like one of the greatest odd things ever, but everyone remembers of a certain age. Yes. A yes. Of, I'm not doing the full accent for obvious reasons, but we, we all remember it. That's what I'm saying. Men, men of a certain age, Ross Noble, men of a certain age, I think that makes us. Yes. So, mate, you're in Australia now. Talk us through that. Uh, yes, I am. I'm on the, uh, near Melbourne, and, uh, yeah, I moved out here. I lived out here for a while, and then I moved back, and then I'm, and then yeah, moved back here, and um, it's very nice. I have to well, say, it's, I can see it's through absolutely... that window. It looks it's, it's quite warm, doesn't, doesn't it, Justin? Yeah, yeah, we can see over your left shoulder. We can see some trees and yeah. what looks like kind of evening sunshine. It looks warm and and inviting, unlike the minus six that it's just been on the school run here in England as I speak to you oh, now. So, yeah. I mean, you, so your wife's Australian, is is that right, Ross? Yes, yes, I met her 22 years ago. Wow. And uh, came over here, fell in love with the place, fell in love with the country, fell in love with her, and just went, yeah, this is, uh, it's great. The trouble is, I don't like to, you know, like, if you bang on about how brilliant it is, people go, oh, what, do you hate Britain? No, oh, it just, it's nice. It's just very <laughs> nice. Yeah, there's a nice vibe in Melbourne, isn't there? Really good. Oh. It's kind of, kind of. I've been there a few few times for racing and stuff, and it's just got this yeah. this kind of London, not Londony, but kind of Londony. It's it's just a cool yeah. place, isn't it? Well, it's sort of like it feels a bit like kind of if you took the sort of uh, especially where we live, we live sort of down the coast, and it's a bit mm -hmm. yeah, it's got a kind of London vibe, but then sort of if you mixed it with the sort of cool bits of Cornwall. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you? Uh, did you come over here uh, for uh, Phillip Island or for uh, Grand Prix? No, I did. Uh, well, well, both actually. I, I did some testing at Phillip Island for for enough race at um, Bathurst, but also race at South oh. Sandown Park. Ah, oh, no. So, I, yeah. so Bathurst. So I've cycled around Bathurst. I've ridden a mo I've driven a car around there. I've driven a van around there, a <laughs> motorcycle, and I've cycled it as well. And, it's a hell. Uh, it's a hell of a piece of road, isn't it? It's incredible. And the thing that I don't think people fully realise is the fact that it's a race track. It's a proper race track, you know, across the mountain and stuff. But there's still, it hasn't been bought out. Like there's still people that live. Live. Yeah. It's yeah. a road. And they yeah. just live on there. And there's one guy who sells homemade honey. And I always wonder, <laughs> I, I always think, does he pull the sign in? Like when they're doing the, when they're doing a Bathurst 1000. Because yeah, yeah. I'm always fascinated by like, you know, it's like the, like the Isle of Man, for example. Mm. The TT, uh, there's one of the corners, which is, uh, it's like the wildlife park. And there's a giant, it's like a giant otter. There's a picture of this otter. <laughs> and, I, and I sort of think, you know, like people working out like what their breaking points yeah, are. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, there's that tiny, you know. And yeah. and I always just think people that 
come to the TT for the first time. They're flying around. And then, you know, 180 mile an hour, full giant otter. Then, <laughs> Anchors on. And then you, whoa, like that, you know. And I feel like if you were, if you were unscrupulous, if you were like a sort of dick dastardly figure, yeah. and that's not enough of that in racing, I don't think. <laughs> the, um, you could get a giant otter and place I would move it. And and put the otter like several like a hundred meters <laughs> like closer, and then it'd be hard on the brakes, and they go, hang on, where's the corner? Oh, and then you go speed up again, and then there needs to be. I think that's what's missing from uh, yeah, professional racing of all types. More is underhand that, is, trickery, is yeah, it, yeah, 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 a yeah. dick dastardly element. There's definitely a bit of that goes on behind the scenes. Oh, is I'll that? tell you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. In, in what I mean, in what sort of way? I mean, do people sort of mess with someone else's cars or tyre pressures or stuff? Or what happens, JP? No, there's just lots of little mind games which go on be- beneath the surface. and um, Like sledging in cricket, but in a Exactly car sense. like that, right, yeah, okay. exactly like that. But but using the press and using other engineers from other teams to drop a little rumour around. And But, I mean, you know, I can remember working at racing schools, you know, and we would move cones. Just for that yeah. reason, just to cause some hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Brilliant. My other favourite thing about uh, Phillip Island as well, like I used to go down there, I used to do quite a lot of uh, tractors on the motorbike, you know, and uh, my favourite thing about Phillip Island is the fact that the wind, depending on, like, the wind can change so quickly. So, like, you know, if you're on a bike mm. and you're going down that, you know, you're going down the main straight and yeah. the wind's against you yeah. and you go... You know, and I'm I'm not top level, so when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. You know, <laughs> and you go down that main street, and then you literally you go, all right, okay, so this is where this is where I need to be all ready, and I'm going to break here. But then the wind changes, and it's behind you, and you get to it, and you go, and finally go, oh, oh, oh no, <laughs> and then because it's right on the coast as well. I think it might have been might have been Chris Vermeulen. I'm not sure, but there was. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was John Hopkins, I think it was. Mm. Uh, a, a seagull, literally. I've seen. Flew, that. You, have you I've, seen? And I've it seen just, the video. It's it's a bit like the. Have you ever seen the footage of Fabio on the roller coaster? Oh yeah, where yeah. He, where got, he, he, gets... where he, got, he got hit by the bird. <laughs> um, but yeah, he literally just got. He just got like hit in the face with a, <laughs> uh, with, a with a seagull, which just exploded. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what happened. At last time I did Bathurst back in 2000, where, where, whenever it was in the V8 car, Jim Richards coming through turn th- uh, one, two. So after the first big straight up the hill, and you've got that really quick right-hander, and yeah, just before you yeah. get to where the cutting is, Kangaroo jumped over the fence straight to the oh, windscreen. Oh, I saw that. Going, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it. Game over. I mean, they're, they're, they're yeah. big animals, aren't they, kangaroos? Oh, man, I mean, they made such a mess of the car. I mean, it was the yeah. car was that was it. it stopped. But they've got they've they're sort of d- denser than humans. Yeah. They're yeah. bit taller, yeah, denser. Yeah, yeah. But also, they've got tiny little hands. <laughs> so when the car's coming towards them, and they're going, "No, stop, stop!" <laughs> it's not like, "Whoa, you're gonna hit me!" They go like that. <laughs> I um, I did um. You would know who this. You would probably know who this was. Uh, I went in a Skoda. Is a right. German, uh, right? Who, I wish I had remembered his name. This is, I went. A, I went in a Skoda with a German bloke. That's a way to start the story. <laughs> rally, rally driver, right. uh, Skoda uh, at Goodwood, right? Um, and he, um, you know, on the on the on the rally circuit. Yeah. And we get in there and he goes, uh, he goes, how fast would you like to go? <laughs> and I just went, look, just go all out. Let's see what happens, right? So we're flying along like that. And he ju- like takes off over this jump. Yeah. And I'm not a great passenger. I, I love driving, but I hate being a passenger. So I sort of force myself to, I force myself sometimes, if I get the opportunity to go in with somebody who's really good, like I went on the back of the two seat uh, MotoGP bike with um, mm-hmm. Randy Mamola, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and it's just like you're never going to find out unless you do it. So I'm in this thing, and this circles back to what we're talking about. Just relax. I can see you go. Where's this going? <laughs> so we're flying around this ra- this circuit, and uh, like a a pheasant just just walks out in front of the car. Mm-hmm. And you know, normally, like when you're driving along, 
your natural reaction is some wildlife you think i might just lift off a little bit but this guy was like he's a full-on rally driver and as far as he was concerned it's just like no no this is and uh, literally fair game yeah this uh (laughs) it's it steps out in front of us and it hits the front of the car and this this pheasant just explodes like it literally it's just like a, a just blood and feathers and this fella he didn't even i wish i knew it was he didn't even flinch and he just went poor bird <laughs> <laughs> is it okay. armin schwartz yeah that might be him yeah yeah, yeah. It might, yeah, it could go to yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good though. Anyway, I'm, so, I'm, I'm. Yeah. Listen, I'm just pleased that you referenced the Fabio roller coaster video, which is one of my favourite things of all time. In fact, some, <laughs> sometimes great, when I'm it? feeling, sometimes when I'm feeling wintry and down, I just put that on because it just makes me smile. JP, if you haven't seen it, it's the best thing you have to see. I'm afterwards. just gonna make a note for it. It's now. just so good, and the, just the, the look of the face when he's got all that kind of like pigeon blood or whatever on his nose <laughs> is too pro. Um, Ross, in terms of you and Australia, so how does it work? Because obviously you're doing what you do out there. You get gigging and um, and whatnot is that something that did you have to start that from scratch and in in that respect you know was that a bit of a a risk in terms of going out there and and starting again or did you already have a sort of following wind in terms of a a fan base out there no i just the first time i came out here uh when was it Uh, it was 99 so it was the all right so i was so i was sort of balancing the two Mm -hmm. the two countries and then uh yeah, and then it just went it just went massive over here. And then uh so now I sort of split my I split my time between the two, you know. I'm back mm-hmm. all the time. If I need yeah. to do something, I, I mean it's terrible for the environment, but <laughs> I do essentially I do essentially commute, you know. And people it's it's terrible. And I feel guilty. And then when yeah. I'm sitting on that plane, just and they're bringing you food and I'm eating and I'm because I basically if I wasn't on the long haul flight, I'd be sitting in a hotel watching movies back to back anyway so <laughs> you might as well travel and do it yeah it's, it's exactly the same but you get something out of it at the end of it you know but the, so, yeah. the plane's going anyway whether you're on it or not so you may as well get on it that's the way i think about it you know I, I mean that is that is one way of looking at it <laughs> yeah, I, don't I, mean, know if, I, I don't know if greta would agree she's locked up now so that's all right so you just look at it and just go well, somebody's going to set fire to this mattress if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else is going to fly tip this wardrobe on that country lane if I don't. Ex- yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure it stands up, JP, with the environmentalists, but I, I hear yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm uh, going to be quiet now about the environment. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, you might get cancelled, and we don't want that, do we? You know? no, no, we don't. Um, Ross, take us back then. You've already sort of said, and we know that bikes are more your thing than cars. So in yeah, terms of yeah. your your early sort of motoring ownership, if you like, where does it begin? Does it start with bikes? Does it start with the first car? What's the, what's the step no, one? Uh, it starts with uh, uh, Ford Fiesta, my dad's okay. Ford Fiesta. Um, and then uh, I learned to drive with that. And then my first car was... Uh, it was an MG Metro. Uh-huh. Um, it was MG Metro, and it was uh, I. I bought it off another comedian for a hundred and fifty pounds, <laughs> and he said to me, "Is uh, it was a, it was a cracking car then, eh?" Oh, yeah, it was, it was, you know. <laughs> yeah. But to be fair, I bought it off this other comic, but uh, Bromy guy, and he went, "I've done every single gig I've ever done in that car." And it's absolutely solid, no problem at all. <laughs> Just don't drive it over seventy miles an hour. And I was like, mm, okay then. So I always kept under seventy. You know, I kept bang on seventy. And then you know, I was kind of uh, uh, it was a long trip home, and I was probably in a bit of a hurry. And it crept up and I got it up to 80 and I just thought, oh, this will be fine. It's not like, you know, I'm on the motorway. It's late. There's mm. nothing around us. 80 miles an hour. And I pulled up outside my house and it burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, apparently the wiring was, it was the wiring loom. And uh, so that was the same car where I had, uh, I opened the door because I'm, I'm a bit like, this is the pr- problem with me and driving, I sort of like get quite easily distracted. And I, I opened the door one night without really looking to see what mm. was coming. And in the days of the, this sort of like, uh, 
in the nineties where illegal minicabs were like all the rage, you know? Yeah. And this, this minicab just took the door off the car <laughs> and it was spinning in the road. And I got out and I looked down and the guy looked at me and he clearly had no insurance. He had no, and I just looked at him and I thought, I'll take a punt on this. And I his car was all smashed up. And I just went, should we just pretend it didn't happen? He went, Oh, thank you. And then he <laughs> drove off. So, so I just shoved the door back on. But it wouldn't stay on. So what mm. I did was, because I've got a bit of a, a history of, of bodge repairs, I tied a, a piece of rope. Like, I had to have both the windows down a crack. Yeah. And then I had a piece of rope tied around holding the door on. Yeah. And then I had to get in through the passenger side <laughs> for quite a long time. Um, and then I went through. Then what I would do is I would buy cars. Uh, obviously, because I, I didn't have a lot of money back then, I would uh, I would just buy cars and I'd just hammer them into the ground, you know. Mm. So I, I I went through a phase of I had an Astra van for a while, and then I had a, a Cavalier uh, estate that I yeah. had like a, a mattress in the back. Mm-hmm. Just for when I was doing kids, just right. sounds a bit <laughs> travel like let's let's do that. And then, uh, and I, mean, then Cav- I, I mean, Cav- to- Cavalier is a good name when you've got a mattress in the back of your estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. a very Cavalier approach um, to dating <laughs> and life generally. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> you can get that uh, and, f- film you stick on the weight windows, which makes it look steamed up all the time, can't, can't you? In the back. Oh, very nice. Well, yeah. I needed that because there was it was only me in there. And then, uh, was, oh, and then I had, and then I had a Ford Granada gear. Nice. Because this was when there was. I went through this phase where I realised that basically you could buy cars that had been the absolute top of the range yeah. a few years ago. And I suppose now you don't really get second-hand cars the way they used to, do you? It's sort of yeah. like, I mean, maybe. But I, uh, so I got this beautiful, uh, it's almost like a, a mint green mm-hmm. Cavalier, Ford Cavalier again, had all the stuff and the, the beautiful car, oh, like electric windows at the time. So, wow. And I had that for a bit. And then, uh, and then, I discovered that you could buy uh, a Jag <laughs> really cheap. I mean, I mean they're juicy, but yes. uh, yeah, and there's a, a Scottish guy, Phil K had one, and then Bill Bailey had one for a bit, and uh, and it was one of those things where I said to Bill, I went, I said, oh, you got the, you got rid of the Jag, and he went, he goes, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, I was doing a Friends of the Earth benefit, and uh, I thought it wasn't really uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I realized you could just buy. So I bought this, I just about three grand or something, which is the most I'd ever spent on a car. Mm. And uh, yeah, and I used to have this Jag, which uh, British Racing Green, which I called the lady. Yeah. And we used, to, uh, <laughs> used to drive drive around in that, doing, uh, yeah, doing gigs and stuff. So, so you, must, you must have a ute da- down there now in the garage, do you? Of course I do, yeah. yeah I, have a, yeah. Uh, I have a Toyota Hilux. Nice. Yeah. And I had one in the UK actually. I had a uh, um, the, the same. I, I got when I was living back there full time. Uh, I bought a, I bought a brand new one. In fact, in fact, it was the first it was the first brand new car I'd ever bought. Black Toyota Hilux, and uh, I was living on a farm, and I thought. I had to drive down the I had to drive down the uh the lane. Yeah. That like the sort of drive bit to get to put the bins out like on mm-hmm. the road, you know. So I chucked the bins in the back and uh, off I went. And as I've said before, I get quite easily distracted. And it wasn't until I pulled up uh, at the BBC in Wood Lane and you used to be able to park like in just in front of that donut bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. yeah. wasn't until I pulled in there that I realized I still had two full bins in the back <laughs> of the in the back of the Hilux just sitting there like, oh shit. So uh yeah I've had uh yeah I do like a I do like a Ute. Yeah. Um I, I'm I'm so I went through a bit of a phase of of uh, like I had a uh I've got a, a Jeep at the moment I've got a Jeep Wrangler because mm-hmm. I've never had one of them, and I thought that that would be a bit of fun. Well, I say it's a bit of fun. I did have a Mustang, so I I had a Mustang, and uh, you know my wife was like, uh, you know, go out and buy a go out because because I've always bought like silly cars. She was like, go out and buy like a proper family car. So I, I'll get a Ford. 
So I got a Mustang. <laughs> and, uh, so and you're talking, about one, one of, you're talking about one of the new Mustangs, aren't you? The, yeah, 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 one yeah, of the yeah, new yeah, ones, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the problem is, is that uh, my uh, youngest daughter, she's small for her age, so that's a dream because she can get in the back and back, a, yeah. a little little legs just fit in there. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is win-win. And, like, you know, whenever I think, oh, she's grown a bit, I think, oh, I've got to hold on. But then uh, she started getting she started getting car sick because she was sort of in the back, like yeah. peeping over the, <laughs> the tiny window. Um, yeah, so she basically went, I'm getting too car sick. So I was uh, I was instructed to uh, to get rid of it. So what's yeah. the, what's, what does the fleet currently consist of then? Obviously, you've got the Wrangler, you've got the you've got the Hilux. What else have you got in yeah. Australia? Uh, uh, BMW, the uh, the iX, you know the electric. oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh my god! I mean, you're look. <laughs> he's looking at me going. Oh really? Oh, hang on. I mean, Jason. Jason does a show all about electric vehicles. So yeah, I mean, do you know what? You're, I'm I mean, ne- I'm nearly converted actually. I mean, I haven't got right. one on the drive, but I, I, yeah. I do think they're getting better in terms of, you know, range and all that sort of stuff. The only thing I've, that I far find is they're all a bit dull because they don't make any noise. And that's part of the fun of driving the car, mm. isn't it? Ah, no, 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 no. But that's the that's the great thing about uh, and, and I'm not, I paid for it. I'm not getting any sort of sponsorship from BMW. <laughs> that that iX, right, which is, uh, you know, it's the big, it's the big uh, yeah, yeah. four by four thing. Mm. It's ridiculous. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, it's huge, but they got, I mean, you'll know this already, but they, they got Hans Zimmer, the- yes the the composer yeah. to come up with the sounds yeah 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 and it's yeah. got like a <laughs> i mean they should have got jean michel jacques <laughs> <laughs> the uh I like I like the idea that the BMW make a bus version and it plays the Venga boys did <laughs> <laughs> but it it's uh when you drive it, when you accelerate, it actually goes, it goes, so, and it, it does this sort of like, uh, weird, okay. like well, do you and, know, because I've, I've, I've wondered about that because there's, there's a guy that lives opposite us and I always refer to it as a bit like the ghost car because when he comes into our little cul-de-sac and then he backs into his drive and all you hear is this kind of like, <laughs> just this weird <laughs> noise as he backs in and goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the foot when 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 I first got it and the, I was on the drive and I'm reversing, and my dogs were literally just like, they, if what? I hadn't have noticed they were there, they would have died because they just. <laughs> they, I think in their heads they were going, "Why is this shed moving? It's coming towards us." But, but yeah, when you come out of like roundabouts yeah. or like you know as you sort of coming out of a, if you're on a bit of a sort of sweeping bend or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you if you accelerate and there's no reason to do this, but you get that you get the punch of the accelerator and it goes, <laughs> and sometimes I just you know so it's not obviously it's not the same as a yeah it's not the same as an engine, but it's uh, yeah I think you just you just set it up so it mm. makes yeah it, there was a, a um, uh, oh no I can't tell that story. I'm not going to tell. Is that classified? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, I tell you what, I tell you, I tell you, tell you the story that we do want you to tell us. Um, Go on, Ross. Is do you still have a tank? Yes or no? No, I had to when we moved back here. I had to, uh, and it's uh, and some people would argue that it wasn't a tank. It was a self-propelled uh, <laughs> artillery vehicle. Um, artillery gun. <laughs> Sounds like a tank artillery. to me. That yeah, it, it was. It was just a tank. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so I um, I bought an ex British Army tank, and uh, yeah, just you know, because because I just I I was living in Kent at the time, and uh, you know they've got that they've got that War and Peace show down there where mm-hmm. all the military vehicle enthusiasts turn up, and that's when my whole that's when the whole I, I'd got it got out of control. I mean, I got like. Uh, I think I was up to, I had about 15 bikes at that point. Okay. And, was, uh, <laughs> and I, I had, oh, and I had, so I had, uh, so I had the Hilux and then I bought a, uh, 
bought this Land Rover. You know that company, Khan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I got like a a matte black Khan Land Rover Defender. Nice. So it's that thing of like most people are driving around. You know, the Khan stuff is all like Mm. Lamborghinis and stuff. But I got the most agricultural vehicle I could. (laughs) Um, So on the tank, did did, did you have rubber tracks on it so you could drive it around the streets? I yeah, you that's a drive. weird sensation, eh? The uh, well, the thing is, it's supposed to be so you can drive around, but as soon as you even turn slightly, it just destroys the road. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not meant to, but it does just destroy the road. So, uh, yeah, I used to just drive it. I had I had some woodland, and what I would do is, when we would uh, with the with the dirt bikes, instead of you know, instead because I look, I. I argue I was saving money because if you buy a tractor with a rotary hoe mm-hmm. to churn up the ground to make a track for the bikes, yeah, that's you know that's going to cost a lot of money in it. Whereas you can buy a tank for like fifteen <laughs> twenty grand, and that's like that's saving really. That's a, a yeah. So I use it, you know, as, as far as I was concerned, it's an agricultural vehicle, and uh, <laughs> with a so, massive yeah, gun on it. Yeah, well, there is that. I had an argument with uh, the bloke that bought the the uh, house next door. He was uh, he's a he's a one of these he's a property developer. He's a bit of a dick, and he was uh, and he kept trying to he was arguing over where the fence line was and all that sort of stuff. And um, so I just pointed the tank at his pants, <laughs> and um, my uh, and my wife just went, "Have you pointed the tank?" At, at his house. And I went, do you think that comes across as a bit passive aggressive? And she went, it's not passive aggressive. It's the most aggressive thing you can possibly do. You've point, you've literally declared war on the guy. And this is, this was the same bloke who like, he threatened to block the access road. He was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll block the access road, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I pointed out to him that, Whatever he decides to block that road with, I'll either go over the top of it or, and I said, if you just look around there, and I had for a while, I I, I bought a GSAB as well um, for building jumps, yeah. you know, and like right. making, yeah, yeah. making obstacles for the trials bikes and stuff. And I said, so uh, put what you like there, but I'll literally just move it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but it was great. My, um, everyone who came around uh would uh i say oh do you want to do you want to ride on the tank or you can just drive because dead mm. easy to drive and my mom uh my mom was down and i went i give her a ride on the tank. i said i'll have a go drive in it and she was like all right okay so she gets in she's only a little woman so she's like literally like just a, a, she can barely <laughs> see out of the hatch and she's driving it around and then uh my my eldest daughter she just started uh at um, play mm-hmm. school, I think it was like, and uh, they'd gone in and they'd said, uh, you know, dropped her off and all that. And she said, Oh, tell us about life at home. Who's in your family? And they go, Oh, I've, you know, my grandma, my grandma comes down and sees us. And she was here last weekend and uh, she drives a tank. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going, oh, she's, she's got some imagination, hasn't she? They were like, Yeah, I move on, move on. So. But I love it. I just, I, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, yeah, just um, that's the, you know, one of the one of the fun things about having a bit of bit of land. You know, you just mm. just buy stuff to drive around. Because that's the thing. I'm actually, I'm not. I know it's, it doesn't sound right, but I'm not. Re, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a. I'm not like a, a car enthusiast at all. Mm-hmm. I just love. I just love riding and driving, and mm-hmm. and I love the actual physical. You know, it's go karts or all that. I love driving, but I'm not the sort of person that goes, "Oh, I I, I never had cars on the wall as a kid." Yeah. I, you know, I couldn't tell you anything about supercars or anything like that. I don't know anything about it, but I'll happily go. That looks like fun, and I'm mm. trying to go. Oh, that's fun. I love that. So, because you're big yeah. into your bikes, aren't you, Ross? Yeah, I am. Yeah, love it, love it. And, yeah. and what and what's in the bike fleet? Uh, well, I I scaled it down, but I've got uh, what have I got at the minute? I've got three, I've got three trials bikes at the moment. I just got a, a Sherco and a couple of Beaters and a KTM, an adventure bike, super adventure. And I'm between, 
I'm between enduro bikes at the moment. But yeah, I decided to sort of when we moved back here, I kind of because uh, it just got it got silly, you know. I'd, I'd kind of I, for a while I had like I had a bike for the track mm-hmm. that was all set up for track days, and then I had an adventure bike, and then an enduro bike, and then a trials bike, and then like a scrambler, and it was you know what I mean. I, I sort of and I had like a, a, like a motor, it just just one for everything mm, and yeah, i just yeah. thought yeah but i've been uh yeah i've just been I've, I've mainly been riding trials recently so i just i'm just doing that you know so i would imagine yeah. sort of where you are then i mean i haven't been to australia but i'm guessing that the traffic isn't stupid like it is now so is it a good place to be a bike rider i mean you know if you're down the coast oh. and stuff you've got some lovely roads and not crazy traffic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah brilliant and, and once you get out the once you get out of the cities, there's no traffic at all. You know, I did, yeah. uh, uh, when was it? It was a while ago now, but I did uh, I did a tour one year where I started in Brisbane and I did the whole of Australia, like literally did a full loop wow. and zigzag wow. around. And I did that all on my bike. I ended up did doing 26,000 kilometers <laughs> around Jesus Australia. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like zooming about gig, gig to gig. And some of them, like when we went around the top, and I've done this since you literally you'll drive for you'll you know like once you get north of Perth mm-hmm. you get up to like you know sort of Geraldton and uh, and uh, Port Headland and all that you're literally driving for like they, you put it in the sat nav and it says drive for four days then turn <laughs> <laughs> then turn left I like that then turn left yeah, <laughs> yeah and you always miss the turn and then yeah. it, it, going across from Adelaide to Perth. There's a there's the Nullarbor Plain, which mm-hmm. is just this flat bit of nothing. Yeah, and that is like that is like just goes on for miles and miles and miles, and there's nothing there apart from the road houses. Yeah, and right. then as you're driving along, you've got on the actual road every sort of fifty or a hundred miles or whatever, you'll come to it's marked out like mm. a, a landing strip, like an airstrip, right, and there's okay. a windstock. And that's where the flying doctors land. Ah. When, if there's a massive, if so, you're riding along, and then all of a sudden, you just think you're Tom Cruise. You're on your bike, <laughs> and you're like, "Hey, I'm on the yeah." And that's it. Uh, and there's a bit, there's a bit there on the Nullarbor where, because it used to be a dirt road that went all the way across. And then what they've done is there's a bit where it's literally they got a ruler, and like on like if you, like you look, they must have got a theodolite set it up, <laughs> and just tarmacked it in a straight line and this bit is actually called like if you look at it on the map it's just dead straight line and it's called 90 miles straight and it's no. 90 miles i swear to god it is 90 miles of dead straight tarmac with wow. no yeah and dead that's nothing. there yeah nothing but wow. 90 miles of pure straight road and uh yeah I love That's a good that. place to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ross, before we let you go, we have one question that we ask all of our guests. And and I think right. I've got a feeling that you'll have a good answer for this. What do you reckon, JP? I reckon he will. So, Ross, we reckon that music and motoring go particularly well together. Mm. So we want your fantasy drive or your ride. Mm. So yeah. where are you? Where are you going? What are you listening to? And most importantly, what are you in or on? Right. Okay. Well, I, actually, I can <laughs> uh, I can tell you what my favourite one ever was. Yeah, that'll do. I, um, so this is a real this is a real thing. This was a moment where I actually, as I was doing, it, I went, "Oh, hang on, this is all right." I was, and this makes me look like a, a sad middle aged man. But so I was <laughs> riding. So I was riding across Africa. Right. I was going from. I rode from uh, Cape Town. To Zambia, wow. and we went we went through Namibia, and I was uh, so I was on a BMW a GS twelve hundred Adventure, mm-hmm. and I was I was in the I was in the Namibian desert, and it was uh, no tarmac, just this this long desert road, and I the sun the sun was shining, and I was going like you know like on a you know like on a bike you get the speed up. And then you're in the sand, and then you you sort of the faster you go, it lifts up out of the sand. So you're sort of skipping along, yeah. sort of. So you're kind of floating, you know, almost like a speedboat. And where the where the sort of tracks cross, 
the bike sort of like moves around it dances around like that and i was going through the desert and i had my headphones in and um that song uh, dakota by the stereophonics yeah, yeah, came yeah. on yeah, yeah and i was going flat out through the desert listening to that song and it perfectly the music perfectly was in time with what the bike was doing and i was I stood up it. like that and it was like i was flying and I, I think you'd have to be, I think, apart from driving around Ibiza in a bus with the Venga boys, being, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you could beat that. It doesn't get better than that. And on that note, JP, I think you need to take us out. Well, sadly, that's about it for this week's Fueling Around, powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help you save money on your car, your bike or even your home insurance. Dave, as always, big thanks, but a mega thanks to our very special guest this week, the one and only Mr. Ross Noble. Thanks, pal. Thanks. Superb that. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Jason Plato or at David Vitti. And if you like what you've heard, feel free to give us a five-star rating, press the follow button and share the podcast on all your socials. Thanks for listening, folks, and we'll see you next time. Ta-da. Ta-da.